Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. We spoke with Greg LaRock, organizer of the Sherikam Area Register Lodging Association and owner of the Cornerstone Motel, to get his reaction on the Atlantic bubble and the latest announcements made by the Nova Scotian government. As of July 3rd, visitors from other maritime provinces will be allowed to come without having to isolate for 14 days. Also from yesterday's announcements, particularly affecting tourism, restaurants and bars can operate at 100% capacity again with proper distance in between tables. Private campgrounds can also operate at 100%. Recognized businesses or organizations can now hold outdoor events of a maximum of 250 people with physical distancing. For indoor events, the limit is 50% the capacity of the room to a maximum of 200 people, again with physical distancing. I also wanted to note that the province has renewed the state of emergency until July 12th. Here's our conversation with Greg LaRock about how the new measures will be affecting motels. Well, I think the Atlantic bubble uh, is going to be a great advantage to bringing business in. Uh, one of the things we're short right now is bookings and business. Um, however, I don't know whether it's going to be the uh, as big as we would wish it to be. I think we're going to find that the, uh, uh, the number of people that are booking uh, may be a lot lower than what is expected. Uh, based on a lot of things, a lot of people plan their vacations and then may have completely taken them out of their books, basically, and decided to use that money to do other things with and staycations at home and put a pool in, finish a basement off, do something. And so I think a lot of that money is also uh, turned around. However, uh, having more people, i.e. the Atlantic provinces, able to do some Vacationing in this area, I think, will be a positive over not having them. So it's a it's a good thing uh, for business, and it most certainly will help the hotelers and uh, the lodging associations out here will uh, will benefit heavily from it. Uh, based also on today's announcement, the restaurants will do very well, and I think that's one of the things that really go hand in hand because. We may be able to bring hotel guests in, but if the hotel guests come in and there's no place to eat or there's difficulties eating, um, I guess uh, I, I'm thinking that there will be an awful lot of backlash on that and, and fewer people will want to travel because they can't get places to eat. Um, so that's, that's kind of my cut at it. It is good. The risk is high. Um, bringing in uh, separate provinces, managing that, making sure that others don't sneak in. Um, I think that's going to be a challenge for all of the uh, province uh, premiers to deal with. Um, I know at our desk we're, uh, we're going to be making sure that our guests are staying here uh, and are meeting the requirements for the law. So if the law says 14 days isolation for Ontario and Quebec, then we will be insisting upon that at the front desk or they will not get a room. Whether other hotels do that or not will be an entirely different thing. Uh, but that's the way we're going to be approaching it. I'm interview you, interviewing you today also because you're an organizer for the association. Have you heard anything else from other motels? At this time, I mean, the announcement came out quite um, today, so uh, I haven't had a chance to be able to get some feedback from the other people um, regarding the new announcement. Uh, the announcement of the bubble, uh, the, the bubble itself coming in, um, that was very positive for the most part. Uh, didn't see a lot of negative. There's a lot of people with a lot of worry. Um, most hotels and motels out this way uh, tend to be run by older um, people uh, and older people are the more vulnerable sect to um, to COVID-19 so I think there's a lot of resistance that way a lot of worry uh, I've gotten comments back regarding people being very worried about uh, hotels dragging in um, COVID-19 well we didn't drag it in but we most certainly had a place for them to stay I guess that's the key but um, so I'd have to wait and give you some feedback on that one once I speak to some other people. I was wondering about the social distancing measures. Do you think that it will be possible for motels to respect that? 
Yeah, I think it's it's going to be a challenge for some uh, offices in the motels, uh, not necessarily very large. Um, for instance, ours is much larger than most. Um, although yesterday I did go out and get a plastic sheet, uh, a plastic uh, uh, barrier that we could use at the front desk. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a challenge in some smaller places. Um, a difficulty with hotels is we like to welcome people. We like to say, here we are, welcome, enjoy yourself. If you need anything, come back. Uh, with COVID, it's going to be a bit different, I think, and it's not going to be as hospitable. Um, you're talking to somebody behind a barrier, even though they may or may not have a mask on. Um, but you most certainly will have um, a sort of a different feel when you're in uh, coming into a motel or a hotel. Um, in the, most of the places here, I think it's going to be a challenge for sure. Um, based on the comments from uh, Dr. Strang, it, it indicates that uh, if they're not able to keep social distancing, uh, then they most certainly are to wear a mask. So that's the mandate now. So uh, looking at that, we'll be able, able to do it, but we will also have masks when we're not behind the shield kind of thing. Are there any other measures you would like to see from governments? Um, the Right now, uh, I, I, I'm looking at the financing side. Um, we still have, um, so one of the financing measures that was given to us by the government, which was a significant piece, was uh, the wage subsidy. The wage subsidy is a great tool. I have no issue with that. But it doesn't take into account that a lot of businesses are not physically working. So we don't can't use a tool that they gave us. Now, if the business is open and they have employees, then they have more ability to run a business and earn some money off of it. Um, so uh, some of the tools that have been provided, a, a lot of the tools actually uh, don't come into play. There's really only one or two tools that will come into play um, for a medium-sized business. Smaller businesses have the province. I guess I'm a little disappointed if I had to say the province doesn't seem to be throwing in too much to support uh, middle-sized businesses. The federal government uh, has, but I think the province runs shy. They most certainly are supporting the smallest businesses, um, so the mom-and-pop shops, and that's good. They need it. I am not arguing it. I think it's a good thing. I just don't think they've gone far enough for the smaller businesses that have employees and need uh, support from the government to be able to do even set up for COVID. Um, province of Nova Scotia gives a setup fee to small businesses, but we don't qualify. So all our setup costs for that will be out of pocket. So there's an awful lot that businesses, uh, I would call a medium size, where five to uh, 20 rooms, they're going, to, they're going to run shy of that. They're not going to make the, the cut for any support on any of the COVID uh, precautions that we are forced to put in place by the government. Is there anything that you would like to add? The only last piece I might like to add is I'm... I'm not looking too forward to the province opening the door to Quebec and Ontario. Although Quebec and Ontario are a large part of our business every year and proud to say that we love to have them here. But at the end of the day, um, until I see numbers go down in Ontario and Quebec, and I think I'm speaking for a lot of people in the Shetty Camp area, um, we really aren't ready to open the door to have Ontario and Quebec come in. Their chances are very high. The population here is fairly old. And by that, we mean they are more susceptible to it. And not only susceptible, but more, um, uh, it will be more devastating to the population should it get anywhere near a, pand a pandemic on the island. So. I know for a fact there's a lot of pushback on that. So that's, uh, that's the only piece I'm like that. Even as, as a motel, right? A big part of your, of your clients come from that area. 70% of our uh, business is actually from Ontario. 
So that's a large chunk of uh, business. And I, I don't want to turn it away. But I also put caution to the wind. There's a time to open and there's a time not to open. And I think the premier clearly is being very cautious. However, I would like to see him be extremely cautious on that particular note. Um, opening up the Atlantic portion was, is a much better tool. Uh, there's less danger. It's, uh, it's most certainly very well controlled in the Atlantic provinces. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling a lot better there. But I am feeling very, very unsure when the Ontario and Quebec open up as planned later in July. You can write to us at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.